And what you have here is the uh, Ferrari F40 in this very, very unique green. It's called Verde Abitoni. And this was presented at the Milano Auto Classica in 2017. This is a limited edition model. And this is in conjunction with Kyosho. So actually this is a Kyosho model with some enhancements by recommendation, I think, if anything else, from BBR models. This is a metal die cast model. So it's not the typical resin that you would see from BBR. Because again, this was really made by Kyosho. This model comes on a very beautiful leatherette base. It has this very, very unique um, plaque, which also specifies again that this is a model by Kyosho and it's licensed by BBR models. It's a very nice touch, and I really do like the stitching around the base as well. The overall shape is pretty accurate to the real thing. I would have to say, just taking a look at the shut lines on this model, they're pretty good for a die cast metal model. And you really couldn't ask for more, especially being that this is metal die cast and it is fully opening. But something that is challenging for metal is definitely the shut lines. And this being an older car, these are made in 87 through 91, I believe, um, it is pretty evident that the lines would not be as nice as something a little more modern. The wheel detail on this model is fantastic. It's really nice. I really do like the spring or clip that holds the hub together so you do have that there is a valve stem but it's a very very vague looking valve stem that goes for the rear wheel as well as the front wheel moving on to the front of the model you do have this very well done mesh grill and you can see behind it you can see a a radiator behind that so it definitely looks the part when it comes to realism so you do have the perforated grills everywhere you do have the lens these lines here are actually like if you're familiar with a defroster that's what these lines are these are the defrost lines for these lenses here the lights do pop up the best way that i've figured out how to pop these up is actually internally and so inside the model and you just simply, there's a bar here, you push these up, and there you are. You can take your tool and lift them as well, but my concern with doing that is scratching the paint. But there you are. The lights open, very nice detail. You can see the bulb and the lens, so it's very accurate. Moving on to the back of the model. You have this very well done mesh grill and it reveals that beautiful mortar in the back. Um, this is part of the actual car, this license plate holder. So unfortunately it is there, it'd been nice if it was not there, but that is actually pretty accurate. I really like the exhaust tips, very nicely done, nice and deep enough to give you that sense of realism. The tail lights are pretty good. So you have those as well, and then you have the side markers, and they are, they are um, <laughs> unlike some other models recently that I reviewed where these side markers basically look like stickers, these have some transparency to them, so they do look really good. And then there are these little things that you start paying attention to, like those clips there, so that's very nice as well. This is a fully opening model, which means that, yes, all the parts open. So we're going to start with the front of the model. There is a notch in the doors to allow you to use your tool to open the doors because the shut lines are still pretty tight. And then 
finally the back. And there are some, I don't know if they're magnets or clips, but they hold this pretty well. I'm going to use my tool to hold this up. And there you are, fully open. The operation for opening it is fairly easy. And I don't have a sense of any of the hinges being delicate at all. So very well done. Now let's take a closer look at this model. Taking a closer look at the interior, you can see the speedometer along with the odometer and the number markers are very clear and concise. And being at such a smaller scale of 118, I would have to say that's pretty good for detail. You move over, you see the prior steering wheel. The bolts are there, clearly. You have the other gauges that you can see there as well. The shifter has the markings on it. The gate looks like the right size. The stick itself that's protruding from the gate looks like it actually can shift. Then you move over or further down to the foot pedals. And those are very well done. If you look further down, you can see the gas pedal as well, and all of them are photo etched. Very nice. You have a floor mat. I really do like those pedals a lot. This is a really well detailed interior. The flocking on the dashboard is accurate to the real thing as well. Here you have the driver's seat. As you can see, it does have a true stitch seat belt. It also has the buckle that goes to the seat belt as well. Nice little photo etched piece there. The seats have a sense of softness. And this is why. They're actually soft. I can't say I've ever had a model where the seats just weren't a simple hard plastic. Can you have this nice flocking throughout? It's really nice. You can see the carbon Kevlar throughout the chassis. You also have the Kevlar material on the back of the driver's seat as well. The door cart is very nicely detailed. You have the latch for the actual door. And that's a, sorry about that. It's a very nice photo etched piece. You also have the row down. Yes, for lightweight, they did not put power windows on this car. So you do have the crank. Now, it doesn't work. It's not functional. There's actually a GMP model where that is actually functional, but it's not the case on this particular model. On the passenger side, you have much of the same. Again, you have the stitch seat belt. You have the buckle there. And again, I just can't get over how these are actually flexible and soft instead of a really hard plastic. Lots to see here in the front compartment. You do have wheels that turn. You do have a functional suspension as well. I really like it. the tarp and Kevlar is throughout. You have this bag here for the additional tools, and it is a soft, again, nicely soft vinyl or plastic material. I like all the different choices of material that were used for this. It's very exceptional. You have this very beautiful heat exchanger or radiator with the fans. This, here is a braided metal material for the chain or cord that holds the lid. You have the venting for the front wheel. You have the venting for the engine which starts from the front and goes all the way through the back. And there is the attachment or other piece of that. So this here connects through here and the air is poured it through the front of the car. Very, very nice. You have all of the appropriate attachments for the tubing as well.
Yosho, uh, E-B-B-R, does not disappoint. Look at those braided lines for each of the coolers back there. I believe one is a trans cooler. The other is probably a differential cooler. You do have this massive muscular to keep this loud screaming engine quiet, which is right there. Really nice tubing for the exhaust. And there is no plastic cut line, which is extremely good. Really like the braided lines here. If you didn't know, these are for cooling. So again, just like with the front, these meet the compartments in the lid here, the back lid anyway, and it draws air in and it draws it towards the engine. Moving further into the motor, you do have the rear that is also a workable suspension. These little springs do actually work. So that's what you see here. Fully workable suspension. You move a little bit closer and you have the two massive intercoolers here for the two turbochargers They're deep, deep down in there. So that's what you see there. Moving in even more closer, can you continue with these massive intercoolers? You have the oil filter there, which is inverted, unlike your typical passenger cars, which the filter be face down. That's in most true motorsports cars. You have this cap way back here, which is a nice photo etch piece, and this intake. My goodness, does that look like it's aluminum or what? I can barely see it, but there is a Ferrari print there. You also have the prancing horse on top of the electronics over here, along with some other printed material. You could look at this one day and think you captured it all and then come back another day and see even more details. You can see the uh, spark plug wires back there, the ignition wires. The plexiglass is very accurate as well. Look at that. And the hinge work is really nice. And there you are, the Kyosho GT40 by BBR and Kyosho, I should say. And now to my conclusions. Well, this was a good model. I really like the fact that this model was brought back, especially with the help of BBR. And I say that because with the BBR, you get the base, you get the acrylic cover, you get the very nice packaging. So it does make this model feel a little bit special. The fact that this one is in that rare green color, which is a true to life car, by the way, that makes this even more special and more collectible. Now you can get the same car for almost $100 off if you just go and get the Kyosho version. That version just comes in the box and you have the model. But for a lot of us, that's more than enough. You won't have this rare green color, but you will have the traditional red. There's some white colors out there as well. BBR also has a few uh, color variations that come with the Italian stripes. I'm very foreign, sure in the future they're going to come out with some other colors, probably some fantasy colors as well. So that's just something to combine. Some of the things I didn't like about this model, as much as I like the fact that it's on a base, I didn't like the attachments. You can clearly see them at the bottom of the car, which to me really throws it off. And it has a lot to do with the fact that this tooling is a Kyosho model, which was probably never intended to be on a base in the first place. 
The other thing I didn't like so much, I really like the color of the seats. Obviously, that was the color of the original car. That base would have been really nice if it actually matched that tan of those seats. That would have just been the icing on the cake. But I'm quibbling. This is a fully opening die cast model. Some of the faults of it being fully die cast is the fact that this zinc die cast does have paint rash. So you have to be aware of that. That is a consequence of using this material. Now, it's not that bad. It really wasn't even worth showing. You really had to look very close to catch it. But I just want to put that out there so you will know. If I was to put a value on this, because I know some of you are on the values, I'd give it a $3 sign. The scary thing is, is that this model, the BBR version, retails on average about $400. If you're looking for the old F40s before this came out, because I know a lot of you are looking for those and you're always looking for bargains, they're about the same price, which is really scary when you think about it. That just says a lot about inflation and the state of where our models are today. Please like and subscribe. That is the best way I'm going to know you're enjoying these videos. I really do appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you next time.